I'm Tom and welcome to Alley Picked. I am always looking to save a buck or two or 20 or 30, but every dollar I save is $1 plus tax that I don't have to spend. And there's one thing that I've always found interesting that I wanted to learn to do myself, soap making. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, Tom, you work with wood, metal, leather, glass, epoxy resin, and now soap? Come on, man. <laughs> Marge. I ate those fancy soaps you bought for the bathroom. I don't actually work with soap just yet, but I do know someone who does. And today on Alley Pick, we're taking a road trip to see this soap making process up close and personal. So if you're interested, hop in the back seat and let's go for a ride. Making soap. Is it easy? Is it expensive? Is the quality better? Do you save money? Is it a good part-time job? Is it healthier for your skin? To answer these questions and more, I'm headed over to visit my daughter-in-law Joanna's home soap making business called Big Bear Naturals. I just want to tell you how excited I am about this. Now this video isn't going to be a complete comprehensive instructional video on all the aspects of soap making. It's just a basic introductory video to show you how this stuff is made. These are the supplies we're gonna to use tonight. Some are specific to this soap recipe. In general, there's four methods for making soap. Cold process, melt and pour, hot process, and rebatch. The method I'm gonna be showing you in this video is called cold process. Some people don't like this method because of the safety precautions you need when using one of the chemicals called lye. The easiest soap method to use for beginners is melt and pour. This is similar to candle making where you just melt the wax and you pour it into the molds. Only in this case, you use soap. To make the melt and pour method even easier, you can buy online kits that come with everything you need. This is the silicone mold that we're gonna pour our batter or mixed ingredients into. Before I show you the rest of the tools and materials we're gonna need for this cold process soap method, let me show you the end result of what we're making. This is a loaf of soap. It firms up in about three days. After that, it can be removed from the mold and then cut into individual bars where they'll continue to dry out for about four more weeks until they can be used. And now, back to the tools and materials. We have gloves, a mask, and safety goggles for use when working with the lye, which I'll show you in just a minute. For the spoons and mixing containers, they do need to be heat proof and it's best to dedicate your containers for soap making purposes. In other words, it's not a good idea to use soap ingredients in the same containers you use to cook your broccoli. This is sodium hydroxide, also known as lye. Danger, Will Robinson, danger. This is the key ingredient required for making soap. We're using distilled water, not sink water, castor oil, sodium lactate, which helps to speed up the hardening process, essential oil, which shouldn't be any more than 3% of the total weight of the soap, a scale to weigh out all the ingredients. This is an immersion blender, which helps speed up the mixing process. A temperature gun is needed because when you're mixing some of the ingredients, they're gonna need to be at a specific temperature. This is an optional oatmeal additive, shea butter, and finally, olive oil. The recipe that Joanna is using is very specific. In order to figure out the exact amount of each ingredient needed for the size of the mold, the individual ingredients get put into a soap calculator. The soap calculator will tell us the exact amount of each of the ingredients that we need. We start by mixing the oils together. 27.6 ounces of olive oil, which is the main ingredient for this recipe. By using a digital scale like this, you should be able to dial in on the exact weight required by the recipe. 1.6 ounces of shea butter and one ounce of castor oil. The oil mixture goes into the microwave for as short amount of time as possible until all the shea butter melts and blends into the olive oil. Once the oils are blended, we can set this aside while we work on the lye and water mixture. We start with the water, pouring 8.77 ounces of distilled water into a container. In a separate container, we pour the lye. When we mix the lye with the water, it does get pretty warm, which is why I said earlier, if you use plastic, it needs to be heat resistant. By the way, we are wearing protective gear to avoid the fumes getting in our eyes and potentially irritating our skin. 
Always mix the lye into the water and not the water into the lye. Otherwise, you can trigger a zombie apocalypse. Seriously though, I think it can cause a little volcanic reaction similar to putting Mentos in Coca-Cola. We add it in smaller amounts, about thirds. You can start to see the temperature rising as the chemical reaction takes place. This can get up to nearly 180 degrees before the temperature starts to drop. It also gives off fumes at this temperature, which is why you want a good mask and adequate ventilation. When your oil mixture and the lye water mixture get within about 10 degrees of each other, we can combine them. But before we do that, Joanna is adding two teaspoons of sodium lactate to the water lye mixture to help speed up the curing process followed by two tablespoons of colloidal oatmeal in the oil mixture for its soothing properties. Using the immersion blender, she blends the colloidal oatmeal into the oil, making sure there are no clumps. Whenever she uses the immersion blender, there's a specific way she holds it and taps it to release any air bubbles that might get trapped under the dome of the blender. The scientific term for this is burping. <laughs> After the lye water is added to the oil mixture, she needs to mix them thoroughly. Now I'm told that this process would take hours by hand without an immersion blender. It'll take about five minutes or so of mixing until it thickens up to the point where it can be poured into the mold. It's about this time that she adds the fragrance oils and blends them into the mixture. After about 10-15 minutes or so, the mixture thickens up to the point where Joanna can use a spoon to make this swirl design on the top where it will then harden and remain in that shape. As the soap dries, it can develop a white soda ash on the top. The use of a steam wand will make that disappear. The soap has now hardened to the point where it can be removed from the mold and cut. Now it needs to dry for several more weeks before it can be used. It still looks a little wet in the middle after cutting it, which is why it needs to dry out for several more weeks until it all becomes one color. Here's a time lapse of a different soap that Joanna made going through this drying process. Now if this video has piqued your interest in making soap, go for it! But do your research first. One video is not going to make you an expert. Personally, if I ever decide to do this for myself, I'm going to use the cold process method. However, if I were doing this with small children around then, melt and pour is probably the way to go. In the long run, homemade soap can be cheaper depending on the ingredients you use. It can also be a lot of fun and a profitable side business. Speaking of a side business, if you are interested in purchasing soap, body butter, lip balm and other natural products, may I recommend Joanna's website, BigBearNaturals.com. And if you go there and click on Collections, Alley Picked, you'll find my merch there, including natural waxes for furniture and leather. Thanks for watching Alley Picked, where I always like to have some good, clean fun and some questionable humor. Now it's time for me to slip on out of here. But before I go, be sure to subscribe to Alley Picked, hit that thumbs up button, and better yet, share this channel with someone else. Tell them about this awesome guy on Alley Picked. Until next time, I'll meet you in the alley.